Oh, Steve, this is the telescope that you have packed for me? Yes. Okay, can I see it? Mead Astronomical Telescope. It came all the way from the America, huh? It did, yes. Oh, lovely. Look at that. That's the foam proper material. Oh, the glorious baby. Amazing. It is beautiful. Oh, yeah. How many years of joy. Yeah. Thank you very much for opening, oh, boxing it for me. And I will take the box with me home, showing it to my lady. Let me see. Thank you very much. No, it's a pleasure. Yeah. You actually are working in Spain and making yes. the observatory there. Uh, and then, uh, so. That's what we're having built. Oh, lovely. So, ENS Optical is now in Spain and building observatory, like yeah. the one that I saw actually today or so in South Africa. The roof moves like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the same design, I think. I've been at this six months now, getting it to this stage. So oh, the lovely. Time's kind of split a little bit oh. I've never been videoed in my life that's all right this is for a video in the YouTube channel I have a YouTube channel so it goes there if you don't want I will not put it there oh, <laughs> yeah so, it's an interesting place look full of the optical oh, systems in there yes please can we see it's, it's a haberdashery of haberdashery of destruction <laughs> yes. This, at the moment, I'm in a rock so there's stuff everywhere. Oh, look at this big telescope. Celestrons, all oh, celestrons. 20, oh, two-inch uh, diagonals. So, as you can see, we're having, de while I'm at one, I'm having the decorators in. So. Oh. That's the baby I know from the glass. Yes. <laughs> That's the baby I'm getting. It is, yes. Oh, lovely. So there you go, I've just set it up. I've got two of them I'm setting up today. Oh. Your, there's yours, and there's that one going to Serbia this afternoon. Oh, what is that? Is it the EMX? Same. Oh, the same? Yeah, that one's going oh. to Serbia. Oh, lovely. Do you have a right angle that we can attach to this? I do as no, it happens. No. Oh, <laughs> just ask me. <laughs> I do. Uh, so there's that. Here's the warehouse. How much does it cost me? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's on the side over there. I'll show you. Oh, this. lovely. Now there's this. Oh, look at that. Optician's Dreamland. Chocolate factory. Ah. <laughs> so, I'm... yes, lovely. I've got lots of stuff. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm after one of those uh, bother semi apochromatic uh, filters. I've got a Sky Watcher 102, a sky, I think yes. it's a Sky Travel. Well, they have a really crappy yeah, well, aberration. Well, they're, they're five, you know. But the wide view of that telescope is amazing. So I just want to see if I can correct that. So, and there's telescopes. Oof. Also, yeah, and all <laughs> and everywhere, Do we have a box for my telescope? Uh, no, I've, I have one box. And unfortunately, that's the one that's got to go to Serbia. Oh, can I have another? If you have any... If I had any, a box... Or one of these kind of carrying thingies. Carrying boxes. We'll have a look in a minute. I'll have I mean, a look I've got British a buyers should have a priority, kind of. Um, is it the, well, in my case, the man who bought it first has the priority. And oh, it was the man in Serbia. Oh. So there's, there's tons of stuff in here. Okay, lovely. Look at that. Maybe I'll have a 10 inch in my car, actually. Hmm. You have a 10 inch scope. Dobsonian, yeah. It's one of those, uh, uh, what is collapsible ones? Flex yeah, tube. Trust you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm building a shed for that, so it's just putting it in a shed. So, yes, once it's, once it's all done. Lovely. Mm. Mm. Uh, the babies. <laughs> Good to bring the kids here to play. Do you have a. A box that I can put the thing on it. Don't know yet. I'll have a look. In yes, this. Uh, we'll, we'll get it tested. Get show you what it does. Yes. Show you how it goes. Yes. And then we'll take it from there. Uh, I've already set it up so the align north works. Yes. So I've turned it on earlier. So what it does is it 
it works a bit like an old derrick it moves up and down yes and there's a little ball bearing in here yes and from that the ball bearing goes in a certain spot when it's level oh it then has a magnet in it yes. so it spins around till it finds north oh and then once it's done that because you've already put the time etc yeah. into it it then works so it doesn't way. have a gps we we'll have to manually put it that's a gimmick saying that you have to do How, <laughs> i don't use i mean i've got yeah. 11 telescopes in Spain yeah. and I don't use GPS. Yeah, GPS is a is a sales yeah. gimmick by yes. companies yes. to get you to upgrade from the previous model to the next to the one. New. It's a bit like buying a Ford Focus LX. But <laughs> next year's Ford Focus, it's the LXR. Yeah. It's ridiculous. But yeah. still. Yeah. Can I uh, attach my... I, I got a, a click lock, a uh, bother click yeah, lock thing. Yeah, and goes here. It's yeah. two inch. I want to use two you inch on this. And may go to other telescopes, this other one. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, Done. everything. Lovely. Best upgrade you can do is you put a feather touch. Yeah, that's what there. I want to actually do a, a motor or something for this, mm. or feather touch. Feather touch. How much that will cost me? You pay about 300 quid for them, so I should uh, oh. wait till you get it up and working first. <laughs> yes. So, but yes, no. Let's see the, so, can I see the optics? Yeah, of course you can. I haven't even looked at them myself mm. yet. Yeah. Lovely. I'll give them a blow in a second if you want. Oh, is it oh, possible? You have a blower, huh? Of course I have. I've cleaned up this all day long. Yeah, really just today up. I saw that somebody was washing it in South Africa. I'm just going to get the excess off. Yes. And then I'll give it a proper clean. It's a bit cold in here. Yeah. That's lovely. Does it need a dew shield also? I have those if oh. need be. Yeah, or I can make one from this. They say they're from well, the foam. Well, make it out of a bit of foam, which yeah. is what I do. I'm a... People are very prissy these days with the yeah. telescopes. They have to be perfect. Yeah. But to be fair, most telescopes we use in the dark. Yeah, you know. can't see them. <laughs> <laughs> so a dew shield's job is to stop you getting on your yeah. blasters. I have that. exactly those things, yeah. yeah I have also a carbon thingy that you can actually clean it without any... Yeah. That's I use it for cameras, so I just can use yeah, it. Yeah, so do I. It's a bit cool in here at the moment. Yeah. Beautiful. So that's how you clean your well, telescope. Normally I would have brought it downstairs and put it into a warmer room because at the moment yes. the optics are far too cold to yes. clean. So when you get them home, yes. just blow them off like that, a bit yes. of breath, clean cloth, yes. and then just gently do that. And any smear, I'm, I'll have left just one or two tiny smears on yeah. and just take them off. See, like there. Oh. But it's because it's too cold. Yes. So. What's the effect of being too cold? Oh. I just want to know. If it is too cold, what happens? Okay, you have a vapor in it. Yeah. That's it. That's but it. that's actually good good because you can clean it. It causes a little bit less friction. Any yes, particles. But it, one of the best cleaning things that you'll ever have is your own breath. Yeah. So, and if it's freezing cold, all you'd be doing is wiping the vapor around. Yes. Hmm. Let's move it, huh? Just to see how it goes up, up and down. Ooh. Oh, the clock! Just altered there. the speed to maximum. There. Yes, you can That's go down to drains the battery. <laughs> trying to yeah. center let's just press center and how it moves in the azimuth does it move oh lovely really that's true where is the battery is it there oh here i've got it being oh you attach to your own power supply oh okay now just uh, last night i was reading about this this one of the ccd auto guiders it, does it have a port for that or no Cannot. No, you can buy a 909, it's called a, a, a hash 909 adapter, which yeah. is a special adapter that, okay, because I've messed with it, it failed, but that's okay. Yeah. Oh, 
How it can be a finder? To be honest with you, as a finder, it's the worst finder in the world. <laughs> uh, and I'll be honest, it's, it's, it's a joke. Yeah. Use that. Or yeah. do what I do. Best bit of advice I can give you as far as finders go is do what I do, take that off, and put a tail rod on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you don't know what, have you ever seen a tail rod? I've read about it, tail rod, but I've not seen it. Tell Rad. Oh, okay. Ugliest finder in the world. Yeah, how it works. I always well, wondered. Basically, it projects a bullseye on there. Yeah. And so you get zero magnification, but in the night sky, you can see exactly where you're looking. Yes. I haven't got one with batteries in it, so look at oh. it. Man. How much are they? Oh, they're about £40. Oh. Yeah. But they're, they're really ugly. Yeah. How are you attached it with a cable tie? Double sided tie. Oh, okay. They're really ugly, but they're really, really, really good. Yeah. It's what I use. Yeah. Can I have one of this? Yeah, yeah. I've got I've got one without stuff on that you just need to put a bit of double sided tie on. This will do very good. I'll dig one out. I'll dig yep, it out yep, in a minute. That's I'll put another one somewhere. So what you're asking me for is that. Oh yes, I want it because I'm, I've got a Omni Celestron Omni One Two Seven, and I yeah. want to use one of these for that. But it should have a bracket because that one has a bracket. Does it have a bracket? Uh, the Omni has a different bracket. The Omni takes that type of bracket. Oh, okay, so how much is this one? Uh, off the top of my head, forty fifty pounds. Okay, can I have this one? Uh, then <clears throat> the other thing you're perhaps looking at. Is Oh, what is that? Uh, a focal? No, it's, a, it's an illuminator. Illuminator. Oh. Are you giving it to me? No, I was showing you because you asked me about one when you first yeah. came in. Yeah. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. this. That's the best finder mead ever made. It's bigger than normal. Yeah. It's 9 by 60. Yeah. And if you look, have a look through it. I will look through it first. I'd have to work it out for you. Yeah. But it depends if you want the right angled one or not. I'm speed, so I personally would use a tail rod. Really? Yes. Okay, I will go with that one until I, I'm I'm a little bit knowledgeable more. But I like this design also. It looks more gimmicky. <laughs> it's a much better finder to be honest, but it's not as good in my opinion yes. as the 40 quid tail rod. Really? So there's... Okay. Yeah, that that's probably a hundred pound. Oh, whereas that's forty. Forty. And to be honest, it's better. So uh, where it goes, where I put the tail rod. Well, what, I, what I would do if it was me was. I mean, I want to have this. I just want to add the tail rod just in the case. I would under. Uh, I would under. Well, you can put it there if you mm. want to a lot of people. Or when you take this off, you can put it there. Oh, just in front of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's lovely. So that definitely goes with the Omni. Do you have an Omni? That's a it's the Max Utoff, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's a Smith Cassegrain. I'll show you. Can you explain for our viewers why we should not use this one? Which comes with the telescope, actually. Uh, well, the biggest problem with this is it's a, it's a gimmick to help show you the telescope when you're being sold yes. the telescope. If you look, it's really flimsy. Very wobbly. Yeah. And the biggest problem is we tend to use telescopes in the dark yes. and when you're in the dark you wear coats because it's cold and yeah. gloves and other things and what happens is you catch it oh, God. so what you do is you take that off you remove it you put some velcro on the back yes. and you go boom yeah that's and you've it. got no you can to put catch here anything. you can put, you can put this put any side. side you want uh -huh. and what a lot of people actually put them on top of the tube because oh. generally your tube's facing up yes anyway. yes that's safe actually <laughs> it's not on the way even so lovely but this is a 
a wonderful thing for me to show you a telescope. Yes. But in but the field, fish. <laughs> in the field, not so good. Yeah. And we also changed the actual uh, viewfinder of that. We made a deal on that. Yes. So this one, which was the original 851, well, this, we this, changed this, it for the right angle the bigger one. This is the original viewfinder that yes. hasn't been made for... Oh, God, let me think. Late 80s. Oh. Was the late, late 80s, early 90s. This yeah. is what's called a Mead Polaris finder. Yes. Uh, it's 9 by 60, so slightly more magnification, yeah. and 10 mil aperture. And out of all the finders Mead have ever made, that's the best. Yes. And what is this doing? It's an illuminator. You just... And does it need a battery? It will more than likely need a battery. And this is the inside here, huh? There's the inside, oh, yeah. Okay. You just go in there, turn it on, job done. It's lovely. Thank you very much. Yeah, brilliant. Let's go for the tail rod because I have also a, another thing. And I, I know that I've, I have Dobsonian and I probably get the tail rod now that I'm here. I will find I know in the eBay the tail yes. rods can be selling for any price. So yeah, yeah. I'll the one you give me now probably is better. So, and I tend to use, if you're a scientist, uh, the tape that I use for astronomy is yes. uh, VHB tape. Yes, oh. Okay. So rather than just normal double sided tape, it's great in your home, yes. but when it's cold or hot, so if you're doing solar or if you're doing nighttime work where it's minus five, it doesn't keep its bond. So VHB stands for very high bond. That's great. Thank and you. And you just use VHB tape. So do you have VHB tape also? Uh, that is a cheap version of VHB, uh -huh, VHB okay. tape, but this... This is something I use for something else, but yes. it's very sticky. Okay, but yeah. VHB tape is generally made by good manufacturers like yes. 3M. Oh, oh, and it will say in the title VHB, and you're going to want for most astronomy uses 12, 15 mil wide mm. roll. You'll pay about 20 quid for a roll. In fact, when we're off camera, there's a new mate that I've been using oh. for the last month, and yes. I bought it off Amazon. I can't remember the make off the yes, top of my yes, head, yes, but yes. it's a type of VHB type. It's 20 quid a roll, yeah. but it's brilliant. Oh. And I'll give you the link to that. That's great. And that's What's the use of it? Exactly, can you explain for the viewers what you do with that? Well, that sticks on there. Uh huh. The other side of it is also sticky. The other side is also sticky. Your tail rod goes on that. And your tail rod goes on that. Ah. This isn't good enough for that because it's no, not it's... thick enough and yes. there's no foam in yes. there. Yes. But VHB is proper double sided. Thank you. We have a tail rod, you look through here. So the rest of it, which is this compartment, oh, it's mostly empty actually. Yeah. <laughs> but if you look, it's basically a battery compartment with two batteries held yeah. in place. Yes. And then it's an illuminator back here, yeah. which illuminates onto. Oh, that's a little mirror. mirror. Down there. Yeah. And then the mirror reflects up onto oh, there. Oh, okay. It's so how you see the sky? The sky is seen through here. So it's from that side, yeah. Uh -huh. You see, a tail red's quite an unusual finder. It's it's really ugly. What's the difference between those and those red dot ones? Uh, this works and they're crap. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> red dot finders, <laughs> inherently, okay. If if I was to look at, try and focus on a star in the yes. night sky, although it's a very bright object, it's yes. also a million, millions and millions of miles away. So yes. it's a light point source. Yes. If you use a point light source of a red dot, yeah. generally trying to line up, as, even as dull as you dull that down, it affects your night vision and yes. you can't actually see the star properly. Yes. This has no centre. It's a bullseye. Outer oh. ring, inner ring, nothing in the centre. Mm -hmm. And each ring is five degrees apart, so it allows you to oh. star up and find things. And the, where there are those rings actually? They're inside the, on that mirror? They're projected. Projected from here. Projected from there onto the mirror up oh, to there. Oh, that's great. Beautiful. So, I'm getting this one also. Yeah. I'll put that there. But that goes probably with my Dobsonian telescope. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't fall, huh? Pardon? Doesn't fall. Doesn't fall. Uh, it will if I look at it with it will <laughs> at I'm just putting it there so it's oh, all okay. together. Yes, it's not yes. going to fall at the moment. Yes, yes. Thank you. No, it's okay. My pleasure. So basically, a plastic shield that you shove over the front of the scope. Yes. Because you're at that angle and it helps to deflect any dew that's in the air falling on the front of it. Yes. That's great. It does yeah. a brilliant job. But we live in the UK. Yeah. 
and Let's the get UK cold. gets more dew than most of the countries in the world. Yeah. So what you do is you put the same thing on. It looks exactly the same, mm -hmm. apart from it's got a heater band built in here. Oh. So, and then that plugs into the dew heater. Yeah, oh, lovely. And the dew heater, this kind of connector, yeah. goes to the com uh, yeah. um, connector. Follow me around here, I'll show you a myriad of different dew, dew controllers. Oh. Basically, that plugs into there and you use that to decide how much heat you're yeah. going to put through that. Okay, it doesn't go on the, on the actual telescope no. itself? Or my... Yeah, this is the only problem with, have, with buying one with a heater. Oh. In order to use the heater, you have to then buy one of oh, those. Okay. How much but, is that? I'll come back to that in a minute, yes. but Off the you camera. don't need it. No, no, you don't need it straight away. Yeah. You could get away with the normal mm. one. Yeah. But in the end, as we're in the UK, I will tell you a hundred and ten thousand percent, you will need a dew heater. Yeah. In the end, you don't need one to start with. Yes. You can get up and running. Yes. You can enjoy the scope. Yes. But dew is your biggest problem in the UK. Yes, definitely. So you will end up buying one. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I know that. <laughs> it is every day dealing with the frost also. <laughs> About this, okay? Yeah. So, so now in a later date, I, I just changed my mind. I wanted to have a you know, heater for this. So what you do is you buy one of these, and then that. Oh, it goes around it. around like that. So it does the oh. same job as the other one, the yeah. other one I showed you, just with two different parts. And what's the brand of that that you showed me? The this one is a Kendrick. Kendrick, I also. Um, yeah, well, yeah, I see here. Mm -hmm. Kendrick Astro Instruments. Canadian Fairly company. made in China. Good. Yep, probably made in Canada. Yeah. But actually... I've opened one, um, maybe not. Can be used for the head also, headband, as a headband. Uh, yeah, if you want to look at like John McEnroe, <laughs> or be on board. That's nice. So, there you go. And yeah. then that, if you follow me, goes... Oh, that looks really nice. Goes with that even, makes it more beautiful. Yeah. So How much is this with this now? Oh, I haven't got a clue off the top. Okay, you have to tell me. That's why I should take it off. Yeah. This is the Mead LX90 that I have bought. As you can see, it's a bit lighter than the LX200, which is a kind of stronger, heavier fork mount, which you can see here. And with this one, you can actually put it a equatorial wedge on this and just do long exposure astrophotography. Of course, with the register stack, so you don't need really much of that if you're just doing casual astrophotography. Register stack will do with 15, 30 second uh, exposures. Good job for you if you want. So you told me whenever I want to move the telescope. Whenever you move a telescope or you've got to put it away, don't be tempted just to move it and do everything with everything assembled. Yes. You always disassemble. Yeah. Always. Because it's very easy to break things like this. Oh, that's a little glass. Yeah. Plastic. So, leave this on now yeah. and I'll show you why. So we'll take that off. I'll pull that off. And they always fall off. When you're finished, this. You undo that clutch. Mm. Oh, it goes down. So it's much smaller. Yeah, Push takes that less here. space. It's yeah. almost the size of that uh, Dobsonian I have. Exactly, it's quite compact. <laughs> That's what, it's, it's, and what you do then, you can carry it on your back seat. Yeah. Job done. Okay, how you open it then? It's not... Ah, there's, a, there's a knack to that. So what about this wire? Is not on the way? No, or you can just do that. Oh, okay. So, so whenever you take it down, remember this isn't cheap. So you yes. always keep a hold on it. Yes. You undo that knob, but you always, always keep a hold on it because you see a lot of me telescopes broken online. And yeah, what I've they seen are, them. These people who stand there doing this. Yeah. And then what happens is the scope goes. And the fall. And you'll Same know when it's that. undone.
just check. There you go. Now, how long you heavy is it? Well, I'll just hold the camera. Yes. And you can try it yourself. <laughs> 